Hello and welcome to the last in the series of five character deep dives. This one I am joined with the player for Peter. We're going to give it a couple of minutes to just kind of let people drop in whilst we ramble a little bit. Um, I'm interested to see if that's a message or the actual Twitch notification coming through because we found it can take a little while to actually come through. Surprisingly, it was the Twitch notification coming through. Um, great that it come through, although I already had the video open, but <laughs> excellent Twitch. Well done. Well done. Hello, everyone. As uh, the lovely Matt has just said, yes, I am uh, Michael. I play Peter, the Green Ranger, and we're here to talk about Peter. Mm. <laughs> Michael is very much not looking forward to this um, to the point where I did message Michael about an hour and a half ago just to check that he was still up for it because there was a part of me waiting for a message just being like uh, can we reschedule or maybe <laughs> not do this um, which would have been fine you know if he didn't want to do it, I wouldn't push him into doing it. It's not what this is about. It's not that I'm not looking forward to it. It's just, I, I feel like there's not really much to say about Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. He's a bit of a two-trick pony, really. See, I think Michael's kind of got it in his head that Pete is a little bit two-dimensional. He's I... grown a little bit. I disagree. I don't think any of the characters are two-dimensional. I think when we first started this, it's quite possible with the sort of limited interaction that the players had. Characters were concepts um, that hadn't entirely been fleshed out for the most part and we're talking way back in the very first episode way 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 back. back yeah um way back when a long time ago a very long time ago but i think as not only the players have kind of gotten to know their characters but the other players things have changed that is my opinion at least yeah i can agree with that i like I, I keep saying it i keep saying it far too much um i'm gonna make his head head swell <laughs> I, I i i just i, I love watching michael go <laughs> <laughs> um i had like like la la last session i had literally absolutely like sod all to do last week and uh, through no thought of like the story or anything just mainly through my own ineptitude and not knowing how to play carter as a character um but the episode was still just a joy to be part of just to watch like the scenes of like michael interacting as a different character again and like nailing it See, I could sit here and talk about like my fellow teammates, like for hours on end, like, and all of it be good, <laughs> just sheer gold. Talking about Pete, not so much. <laughs> well, considering I only Michael. have one pretend girlfriend, it, it kind of has to be Sophie. Um, I have made this joke. I don't know if I've made it on screen or not. I've made this joke off screen a few times, and it makes me sad that Pete has a better like romantic life than I do. <laughs> But such, such is life. I suppose when you look like Tom Holland, it's kind of easy. Um, I do want to sort of give a bit of a shout out to the other Michael. Um, he does, he does come to our lovely one shots with research done and questions haven't been asked suggestions haven't been thrown out and i think it shows but 
you don't give yourself enough credit. I, agree I just kind of wing it. <laughs> I very much agree with Adam. Um, you are quick to try new things. Your American accent, one version of it worked out very well. And I think if you tried to practice I'll keep trying it. I'll a little keep bit more it. often, you'd probably nail that. I can't do accents very well. Um, part of that, you know, my lungs are, aren't great. Um, talking is fun. Um, talking at a normal accent is good enough. Uh, we'll focus on that. But when I listen to you and go from your multitude of different bits and pieces, your wobbles for the... Um, <laughs> yep. Your... See, I find it so hard to do, do things like that on like, demand. I'm so, like, as, as We could turn the cameras off right now and come off stream, and I'd be sitting here firing out like Australian accents and New Zealand and South Africa and all sorts. As soon as I'm on camera, it's like my voice goes, <laughs> no. Would you say that's nerves then? Uh, it could be nerves. I think it is just completely a psychological thing. That my throat just goes, hmm, maybe not so much today. <laughs> See, you just need to uh, just need to get you over that hurdle. Psychological yeah, I'll get there eventually. I'll get there eventually. Michael can only from now onwards play Australian characters, other than Peter. Every character after this is Australian. <laughs> I'm not sure why Australian. they're all going to be Australian. They're all going to be called Dave. <laughs> Every single one of them from now on is just Dave. Or Kevin. No, I like Kevin. No, I'm changing it to Kevin. You're right, Kev. <laughs> it works. Dave Kevin or Kevin Dave? <laughs> Kevin Dave. His last name will be Dave. And look, as Akneff says, if you weren't doing so good, why do we. I'm not sure we say it teasingly, just for the record. We just blame Yeah, you. it's not teasing, it's just yeah. fully blame me. Hashtag blame Michael. It, it makes yeah. sense. It makes sense to be fair. Yeah. I mean like I It see could somehow that. be linked into being my fault somehow. It's um it's like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, except it's seven degrees of Michael's fault. To be fair though, so like you're so all right, when it comes to like the story and thing, <laughs> hey, hey, no spoilers, no spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> We're not talking about things. We don't <laughs> talk about that thing, <laughs> right? Right. Indeed, there. indeed. <laughs> Shh, it's a secret. Everyone already ruined it for Jay. <laughs> Bless him. I think the week before, just I don't want to be involved in this conversation. I don't want to know. I will mute myself the very following like week. Someone just blurts it out, just like I knew not of this. It's like sorry. It's okay. <laughs> if um, if you're not watching fact, this on oh, Twitch, you're all good. You can't see the chat. Ne it's all good. Nearly you can't sword, see the spoilers. Nearly sword. It's fine. We may go into spoiler territory depending on how how generous I'm feeling later on, and depend on how much I'm actually able to talk about Peter before then. <laughs> Let's find out. If I need to like pad for time, then spoilers will just get thrown <laughs> out there. So, I'm going to ask the first question. We built Peter on stream a million years ago. Because everything Indeed. is Indeed. either yesterday or a million years ago. There is no See, there's no perception now, draw, beyond that. Drawing back the curtain and all of this a little bit. The Pete we built on the stream was not the first time I beat built Pete. He was not, no. Because he only got to play as a level one in two games, I think it was, wasn't it? Um, I think the first one we didn't even get to morph. Um, and the second one was a fool's errand. Yep, we played for a fool's errand, and which Jayden I was, was lucky enough to play with with Jayen. Yeah. Um, he he wasn't our Red Ranger in that game, was he? I believe he was. 
I believe he was I mean, the he, Red Ranger in that game. He may, yeah, he may have been Red in that one too. Um, and that was back when Panit, uh, Panit, Panit, yes, Panit, because I was going to say Pete, Pete and Finesse at the same time. Um, that was back when I had an, the strange idea that Pete should be Finesse based. <laughs> because I thought I had to take that with the dagger weapon. Uh, before we had clarified things. So yes, uh, sorry, I interrupted. Carry on with your question. Problem is, you've knocked the question out of my brain. So we're going to go to another question. Um, or at least possibly the first question, but worded differently. Indeed, let's go. I was going to ask you what made you want to play Pete other than your crippling addiction to the Marvel Universe. Um, Specifically Spider-Man. I do love me some Spidey. And the the name and the fact that, yeah, he's called Peter Parker, his dad's called Ben, his mum's called May. Uh, I've even got this joke continuing on in another off-screen game that we're going to be playing at some point where my character is either going to be played called Eddie Brock or Flash Thompson, one of the two, but he's a Black Ranger. So, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, he's not obsessed. No, not at all. Um, but um, when you say what made me want to play him, do you mean like come up with Pete as an idea or do you mean just play a character in the game in general? Uh Pete as an idea. I think thinking back, it was I think it was just I'm trying to remember. I think it was like a random like Forbes article that had like Power Rangers RPG coming out and we were playing Dungeons and Dragons at the time and mm -hmm. We both read it, and we were like, we have to try this. Um, and then I was the like, I'll play Carrot School Beer. <laughs> the Day of Destiny stream came yeah, out. Yeah, Day of Destiny came out. Um, Blew our minds. We got to watch that. And I was that like, was amazing. I need um, me a dragon. Yeah. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. So, specifically Peter then, specifically the Green Ranger... Specifically the Green Ranger, because as a kid, uh, as many people, you know, he, he, him coming in and just soloing the entire team, like kicking them out of their own Megazord, like I was just, mm, yes, all of that, I must be a Green Ranger. So when I was a kid, I always wanted to be the Green Ranger. And even like, you know, when you're a kid in, in the playground and you're playing with all the other kids and you're playing Power Rangers, even when it was like a different series of Power Rangers, I was always, no, I'm Tommy the Green Ranger. They're like, yeah, but he doesn't exist in this. I'm like, no, I am Tommy the Green Ranger <laughs> as my dragon. Um, I mean, hence, Pete's crippling love of his dragon sword. It's not Pete, it's completely me. <laughs> give it five minutes. Um, halfway through the season, he will probably will exist. Um, considering the Green Ranger character, Jason David Franks, was only supposed to be in the show for a handful of episodes. Handful of episodes. Mm -hmm. And I believe is now second only behind the actor who played Bulk. For the most appearances, yeah. yeah. In the entire franchise. Just something about him clearly resonated with all the kids, as you said. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that that made me wanna wanna build him him green and and especially because i know it sounds really dumb but i really just love the aesthetic of the dragon shield um mm, beautiful just the green and the gold and yeah i love it i love it so much and yeah again the dragon sword when i like when i was a kid i wanted that toy so badly and it's the only one out of the original toys that i didn't have i had like the megazord i had titanus just could never get the dragon sword and it made me sad to this day i still haven't actually owned a proper dragon sword Got like half a Dragon Zord 3D printed. <laughs> I need to finish him at some point. And you still look when when we went to MCM, you were still looking in all of the all of the stands that had anything going through yep, the and, and boxes. Yep. Mm -hmm. I need me a, a Morpha for one thing. I need me a Morpha, and I, I want the not even the Light Collection because. Yeah, no. Um, I, I want the Legacy Collection Dragon Dagger because, yeah, I wanted so, that back when it came. I wanted, 
I wanted the San Diego Comic Con limited edition 24 karat gold plated <laughs> Dragon Dagger, but that thing was like hundreds and hundreds of pounds when it came out, and now it goes for like upwards of a thousand pounds on on eBay and things. So I'm never going to own that. No, we'll. Um... I mean, never moving say along. Never say never. <laughs> But, I mean, if I win the lottery, there's a lot of things I plan to do. <laughs> I think it would be fair to say then. Pete and Michael, Michael and Pete. Yeah, we're there's, interchangeable. There's a lot of crossover there. Mm-hmm. There, like, the, part of the reason I was apprehensive about this is, like I said, is because I don't feel like there's much to say about Pete because Pete is basically just me, but smart. <laughs> that's all it is. i'm just as socially inept as he is um i'm not really like too great in social situations as most people know um yeah he's just me but smart First and thing. that is our focus episode on pete um <laughs> First Tune thing, in next week, Thursday. That would imply <laughs> that you're not smart, which isn't true. Second thing, here's the thing. You may have parts of you in Peter. And I think, especially when you start out, like, I've been playing tabletop role-playing games for about 16 years and my first ever character was pretty much word for word a copy of a character from a book that somebody had bought me because I didn't know what to do so mm -hmm. that's what I did and then as you build characters you you look for things to influence them and I think, especially when you start out, a lot of the things that you influence them with are facets of yourself. And if we be honest here, this is your third character. If we ignore the yeah. fact that Peter's had three different character sheets, this is your oh, no, third he's character. only had two, because we, we used the first one, just transferred it over. To two different character sheets, but then this is your third character. Hmm. Yeah, first one was a, a, a lovely owling um, called Astrid Crixaris. She'll forever have a place in my heart. And that game ended so badly we don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was a little firecracker. She, was, she, she evolved from what she was first meant to be. She was meant to be like some little book, like a book nerd, basically, that didn't really say or do much. And I turned her into death from above. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't, I, I don't have a type at all when it comes to these sort of games, you know. Agar wasn't a, a man with a big axe that wanted to hit things. Never. Or was it a hammer? No, it was a hammer, wasn't it? it was. That's my hammer. So you started off then, so we'll, we'll play on that. You started off with Peter, and he had a focus Power Rangers and cultures and the intention yes. was that peter was the nerd who spent all of that time glued to the tv screen he'd watched all of the fights he'd watched all of the news articles he'd probably spent tons of time on my face re-watching them all um you know going through bulk and skulls videos and writing down like journals of the monsters they mm -hmm. fought with their weaknesses and things in fact the first time we saw pete on stream he was dressed as a power ranger before he was even a power ranger he was indeed as the green ranger yep mm -hmm. and with the kids um like running around with the children in their costumes and joining in but that's how it started yeah that's see he took we quite now. He took quite a quick shift from that because originally I, I wanted him to be like culture and like technology, but I didn't really focus too much on the technology at first. I wanted him to be like that pop culture referencey dude, but for Power Rangers. Um, but then once 
we we started playing we started coming up coming into situations where i was like ah oh, that'd be fun to build something for that or oh, it'd be funny to do something like this for this and it kind of i made me realize that no i want to shift that focus a little bit and yes he's mad about the power rangers and whatnot but he's specifically more focused on what their technology can do and how that could be implemented like into everyday life and the future so hence is the course that i'm taking with clay Doyle's pete which i frequently forget what i named <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just call it clay Doyle's pete's class um and uh, someone can reference that for me <laughs> and um and <laughs> figure that out <laughs> she's like I, I, I what's the word like uh, you know like when you're like you're in a courtroom and you've got like someone with the dictaphone and they're just tapping away court steganographer yeah that that person they like she she is our our record keeper so peter started off then we we we'll tell me if i cross a line in the comparisons because obviously this is this is a conversation that is evolving as we're talking this isn't something we prepared for Peter and Michael, the um, almost Wikipedia-like knowledge of the show and the monsters, that was very much on brand. And the technology ideas, the things you've built, like the ideas are things you've come up with. The ideas are things you've and you've tried to explain science wise, but it's all made up. <laughs> it is, it is, and there's nothing wrong with that. I am terrible at techno babble. I know there's, t I know there's charts out there that exist for people like me, um, where you can literally just like roll a dice to get words to put together to put techno babbles together um because my brain wants to go to science and actually trying to explain it and then my brain just freezes yes no nope. yeah um but that aspect wasn't something that was intended that aspect wasn't something that ever when we talked about building your character it wasn't a thing that I had primarily no. aimed for. I wanted him to know about things, but not yeah. necessarily be the tech dude. No. Um, but I think the the main thing that switched it for me was when I, th I think the first time he ever thought of actually doing something proper techie that was like outside of scanning anything, like using the command center and whatnot, was like the idea for the MGD, which I hold my hands up completely. I completely stole from the Boom Studios comics. It's just a, a reimagined version of the Black Dragon canon. But I just thought, Ranger Slayer, excuse my French, but shit. Yeah, that, was, <laughs> that was rough. Um, yeah, man. She just come in and like, pa 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 cow. I was like, okay, we need a, a means of deterring this one. And then you introduced the Titanium Ranger. I was like, oh God. And then there was the whole hey, look, there's loads of morpho components and things here. It, like, light speed. And I was like, right, Pete's building things. <laughs> just going to take these. Yeah, just going to steal all of these. You're not using this, are you? No, <laughs> you are? You are? Uh, okay, never mind. I'll put it back right now as he scoops it into a bag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think he's been learning from uh, Sarah a little bit. <laughs> Four-finger discount Sarah. But to be fair, he did kind of start it as well, didn't he? Like with that whole yeah energy, energy yeah. generator <laughs> called Wala Mode Activate. Yep. <laughs> um, I'd forgotten that actually. The oh, there's something shiny that they're fighting over. Well, we're gonna need to teleport it. So let's just I'm gonna have this. Grab it and hope for the best. And mm -hmm. oh, it's explosive. It's all good. It didn't go bang when I was touching it. So it's okay. Yeah. Everything ended well, and somehow teleporting this volatile substance also did not make it explode. Fabulous. Thankfully. 
We, yeah. we lucked out. We lucked out there. <laughs> we could have had our first on screen Power Ranger death. Hey, we could have been in the timeline we were in last week. Jeez. <laughs> um, not we are not one. done. <laughs> <laughs> I will get what I want from that timeline. <laughs> um, I think, in particular, like, We've had a lot of conversations about the mechanics of Peter because mm -hmm. I think more than any other character Yeah, more than any other character I think Peter's the one that I've worked tries, on with you. Yeah, um, and tries to break the game too much. <laughs> uh, there's always a question. It's like, can I do this? Or can I can I have this? Or when can I get a Master Morpher? Never. Never. I'm going to have a Master Morpher one day. Never. One day. One day. Wait, look, there's this running joke that we have off camera that when I win the lottery, I'm going to pay for everything. And we're going to do, like, in-person meets and whatnot. And I'm going to, like, pay for other streamers to join him. We'll have, like, a, a cross-universe Power Rangers game for our, like, end-of-the-world, like, end-game game as such. Um... And at that point, I get my Master Morpher because I'm paying for it. I get it. <laughs> so I would have my Master Morpher, goddammit. I'm saying nothing. Um, but I also agree that we need more Dark Timeline adventures. I cannot confirm or deny that there are further Dark Timeline adventures planned. I can confirm there are. <laughs> if I have anything to say about it, I can confirm there are. There are. Um, but one of the things kind of being so evolved in the mechanics with Peter has been interesting is seeing when there's been a question, it's like, I want to do this. It's not no. It's how, how do we make this work? So the green spectrum isn't a particularly smarts heavy one. Um, Didn't really think about that, but the whole, <laughs> uh, I must be green. <laughs> it's pretty pants. Um, mm. But. Pete is handling it well. We have um, adapted, improvised, overcome. Take that. I mean, he's doing relatively well, especially since getting that mentor perk. The mentor perk was kind of what swung things around to help with his smart side of things, because I decided from the very beginning, Pete doesn't know how to do people. Um, <laughs> in fact, I think, yeah, when we first started for social skills, I put one of my points into animal handling rather than like persuasion or anything else because Pete's better with animals than he is with people. Even though the ostrich still didn't like him. No. Um, still, still salty about that. And there's some really funny things with that ostrich that I really wish I could talk about. Um, <laughs> but I can't. Um, you heard it here first, kids. The ostrich is going to make an appearance at some point. It's not, but there were a few points in some of the earlier games that Where it had the, the opportunity to pop up. Ostrich had the opportunity to. Let's just say, if your GM says to you, "Would you like to play a glutton for punishment?" The answer is yes. Yes, I would, and. <laughs> You do want to put a couple of points in animal handling. Animal handling. And you heard it here first and second. Do it. Because that ostrich is awesome. Um, yeah, I, I put that rank in persuasion in a little bit later on. <laughs> Just because I realized I may need that. And so far, it's served me well against one person and one person only. 
but we've been able to do cool things like the take the mentor perk from the gi joe book mm -hmm. and one of the reasons we've been able to do that is because e20 is so cross compatible that it's just been a case of grab apply Fantastic. it is Keep going. fabulous yeah um use social increases to increase a smart based skill yes yes we will yes we will indeed um allow us to get some more uh technology yes yes indeedy it's fantastic and and getting yeah. that d6 in technology just took Pete on like a different kind of level when it comes to doing his tech checks now especially because of obviously my student um, background it means I get to roll with edge on my student category of choice which is grid tech. my grid tech mm -hmm. so that makes me happy and I just need to remember to put a point in specialization next time <laughs> there is obviously the story point benefit of being able to roll as roll a, specialize. a specialization which is going to come in really handy next week potentially um as we start looking at some of the across the stars rule sets um new things and stuff in the adventures for reasons that i will not go into um but pete is not just technology orientated although the technology orientation is pretty good and in hindsight is a conversation we should have for a ranged weapon for peter instead of using targeting we can use technology technology mm. yes. something mm, that I, I hadn't considered until this point i do like firing my lasers yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know dragon zord breath weapon would be cool in morphed form yeah just just throwing it out there there are uh, there are weapon upgrades that allow you to use um, technology to roll for. Range I did not know this, and this would be quite nice. It would be nice for Peter not have to get yep. right up in there all the time because he gets thumped pretty hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> our lovely Red Ranger asks, "Can he use a long stick? Do we trust him with anything else?" <laughs> Yeah, I suppose putting something that could potentially explode in Pete's hands isn't really a good idea. Mm. He's proven himself more, he's proven himself like more than not capable now. There were those few times <laughs> where uh, you know, that's some incidents in incidents. <laughs> I love how you're like <laughs> may have happened. <laughs> gentle brush my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Again, just stating this hat was bought for me by the lovely Matt, um, specifically for the running joke of Pete losing his eyebrows. Yep. And canonically, this is whenever he burns his eyebrows off, this is what he wears. The fact that after this conversation kept happening, um, this hat did appear on my Twitter feed. Um, yeah, just had to happen. But Pete is also, I don't know if that one was intentional or not, Michael. Um, oh, no, I realized what I was doing. Okay. That's why I swapped to two I fingers like, quickly. <laughs> um, Pete is also built for... Hitting things. Hitting things, both in his Zord and with his power weapon. Considering mm -hmm. he is a level 6 Green Ranger, he has a D6 in both driving and a D6 with specialization in might power weapons. Mm -hmm. Me like to hit things. As, as Matt knows, I have a tendency for building characters that like to punch things really hard. Um, hasn't always gone in my favor, fa favor, um, but it seems to be working out all right for Pete so far, so far, ish. There was that one episode that, you know, he kind of got his ass handed to him, but that was 
kind of the point of the episode. <laughs> Hold on. Teach Pete some humility, and uh, yeah, yep. I think it worked. Yep. Um, I have to say, when when Michael did come to me and he was like, I'd like Pete to fight Goldar, I was like, that's cool, but Pete's going to get his butt kicked. And Michael's like, yeah, but not too bad. I'm like, well, you know, Goldar is a threat level. Michael was kind of like, maybe we could just shift him down. I'm like, <laughs> Didn't a tiny nah. bit. I was nah. like, okay, fine. Then Pete has to get his ass kicked. <laughs> I'm okay with like, that. It's going to be a one-on-one fight that for things and stuff and stuff and things that other rangers aren't going to be able to get involved in, and they're just going to have to watch Pete just get wrecked. Which and was... surprisingly, Matt had no issue with that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was it was an interesting uh, experience. Um, mm-hmm. It was a learning curve for our Green Ranger, who had been doing pretty well in combat up until that point. It's um, always nice to have like that moment where like the quote unquote hero can't win. Yes, like um, Jay's or Kobayashi Maru. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just you think you're like yes, you're doing quite well at your job. Air quotes. Um, <laughs> And you guys have been winning. You've been defeating everything that comes at you. Um, and then Goldar walks in. And it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's Goldar. He's going to leave or something. No, Goldar's just beat Peter down. Um, yep, he beat me good. Yeah. And obviously, I also wanted to tie in, like, there had to be a, a, a thematic reason as to why Pete would just rush him without thinking. Because so far, although he's like, he was like the character that likes to go in and get punchy punchy. He wasn't one to lose his head about things still. Um, so I, I had to tie in obviously Pete's mum, And I was like, yeah, cool. That's a cool thematic thing. And then it ties into like the Spider-Man background still. And it made me happy to do it. So yeah, I got to kill off a family member and it cemented the fact that he should be a superhero because you know all superheroes have dramatic origins name one superhero with both parents go (laughs) Uh, probably Doctor Strange because his superhero-ness happened much later in life but are his parents alive still I don't know who knows? Someone research Sophie. it there, now. Sophie. Um. <laughs> Sophie. Sophie has both parents. So does Q. Yeah. <laughs> I love that counted. <laughs> I don't know if that doesn't. was to the same same thing or not. Um, no, no, that was to something completely different. Cow does not have <laughs> okay. both parents. That's why I, yeah, that's why I thought it was funny because you said cow did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shots fired. Shots fired. Um, yeah, we don't talk about cow's parents. Um, yeah, moving on. Um, <laughs> moving on. Moving on swiftly. <laughs> Um, I have no intention, just for the record, I I do not feel that this needs to be said, but I have no intention of messing with anybody's parents or any other NPC that they have brought to the table without their consent. On the other hand... <laughs> any NPC they haven't brought to the table such as pre-existing NPCs or NPCs that came over from other shows are totally fair game, as we found out last week. Yeah. F's in the chat for KLC, everyone. F's in the chat. (laughs) Yeah. Um, We're going to take a moment of silence. Again, swiftly moving on. (laughs) Take a moment of silence for our girl, Kelsey. 
Yeah. So we've we've talked a little bit about the mechanics of Peter. Uh, he's low social. He's high strength and speed. Uh, he's relatively low smarts comparison to strength and speed, but higher than uh, higher than his social score. We it's not hard. No. Um, <laughs> we do have um we did go for Peter straight away with extra grid power. So We did indeed. You do have power strike, which you haven't been using an awful lot recently in hindsight. Yeah, I don't I don't use power strike too often unless we're fighting cuz it, it's only when we're fighting a boss monster that I decide to use it cuz fighting a pie or a tenger or something we can kill them in 2 3 hits. I don't need to waste PP for that. Um so I only fight use it when we fight boss monsters and I don't really seem to get the final blows on boss monsters. So <laughs> someone's already done critical damage to it or something by the time I get to hit hard. So I'm like, yeah, I'll save my PP and maybe use my lesser dragon charge instead. Yeah, I have to say I I felt really bad just going back a moment to the the whole appearance of the Ranger Slayer because three out of four of her initial attacks were like critical hits. But, guys, you critically hit my bad guys so often it's unreal. Like... Greatest moment ever, me and Cow me and Cow just solo in. Two yeah. turns, twelve seconds, twelve seconds dead. Just <laughs> Um You know what, Jay? I wasn't gonna touch that, but yes, save his pee pee. Um <laughs> He's now considering the uh Yep. <laughs> <sighs> Oh god, if that ever gets clipped in porn line. Yep. <laughs> um and just saying, if you're still there, this is a perfect moment to clip. Speaking of your lesser charge of the raging dragon. Dragon How'd you Yes like indeed, it? speaking of I do very much like it. I wanted an ability that allowed me to to hit multiple things, because um, I did, at that point I still didn't have extra attack. Because for some reason, Green Ranger don't get that until ages. Which you'd think, being a solo ranger, being able to hit more than one turn would be kind of important. But no. Um, so yeah, I quite en enjoyed the idea of of the charge, and I, I'd kept saying to to you for a while that. Because I chose the the dagger that can go into the sword, I really wanted I like the idea of it being able to shift into other forms as well. Mm -hmm. um, one of them being like a spear or a javelin, um, like a, a not a javelin, a lance is the word I was looking for, like a jousting lance. It's um, called a lance. Sorry, knight's tail. Indeed, back. it's called a and I, so good, it's so good. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's why the first time I got to you, I I I made it look like just the dragon sword's tail, but as a lance it made me happy but the fact that it also allows me to move is great and also the fact that it only costs one personal power i can hit two things with it and i can do it more than once in a turn so to me that just got rid of the need to to use power strike because yeah i can i can ah, that does lead me to one question though now that i've just thinking about it if i was to attack one enemy with the lesser dragon charge, would I do two damage to them? You would not, because it's one damage to each enemy. It's not two damage divided by... Could you do... Because it moves me ten foot, could I move five foot, then five foot back and hit them twice? No. Because it's moving <laughs> in a straight line. That would be the opposite of moving in a straight line. It'd be moving, turning 180, and moving back. I'd still technically be moving in a straight line. <laughs> no. Hmm. It is called lesser charge for a reason. So... <laughs> lesser charge for a reason. There is a. There's always time. There's always time. On. Yep. Um. And there are some really cool Zio. There's a very cool Zio general perk. Yes, in across the stars as well. 
I think I may have missed that one. Uh, I've got. Have I got the PDF? I have got the PDF open. It is called. Doing... I'd be disappointed in you if you didn't. To be fair, uh, it's actually. I lied. It's a grid power. It's called Zeo Crystal Burst. A uh, boost. Zeo Crystal Boost. Um. For any of us that don't know what that does. Uh, you possess one of the powerful chips of a legendary Zeo crystal. Once per scene as a standard action, spend two personal power and use your Zeo crystal to gain a benefit based on the item in which you insert your Zeo crystal. If you insert it into your morpher, you gain one upshift, one upshift on unarmed attacks and plus one to all defenses until the end of the scene. If you insert into your power weapon, your power weapon inflicts one additional energy da energy damage with each strike until the end of the scene. If you insert it into your Zord, you gain an upshift to driving Zord skill tests until the end of the scene, or increase damage on a single successful Zord attack by two. Ooh, that could make my laser do six damage. It could. But the upshift, I think, in general, is a... The up, yeah, the upshift and the health boost is... Yep. Especially with the difficulty in trying to get more health, definitely definitely Morpha is uh, the way to go with that. But we, we have things and stuff planned for Pete's future. And uh, if every member of your team has this grid power, whilst piloting your team's mega form... You may all insert your Zeo Crystal pieces to add one damage to all Megaform Zord attacks until the end of the scene. Is that one damage per crystal, or do you all have nope. to put it in one and you gain one damage? All. Yep. Which is pretty nice, especially if you have the enhanced melee attack or enhanced range attack, which is based on the highest damage of a melee ranged weapon Cute. times by three i think it is so you could have a one shot attack that does like potentially up to something like 15 damage it does make me sad because again drawing back the curtain a little bit folks at home um we sat down and built pete all the way up to level 20 before across the stars come out and now across the stars has come out and there's like stuff in there that i'm like Hmm. <laughs> can do it again. We can, but he was so perfect. <laughs> if he was perfect, you wouldn't be having second thoughts. He was perfect with the information I had at the time. Exactly. So, just saying, there's other options. Other options. As Jace pointed out, back to the drawing board. Indeed, indeed. If I, if I could, I probably would strip everything off of Pete and completely rebuild him again. Um, he'd probably come out relatively the same, but <laughs> just with some things here and there a little bit different. Um, and remember, I am not above giving out rewards. Free shiz! Yes, not lots of free stuff, but free stuff to... Um, I mean, At you've given us points that make sense. You've you you've given the... us in environmentally sealed uh, yeah. the zero upgrades, so the lesser dragon charge. Um, you gave us something else as well, didn't you? Give us another survival boon or something for free? Nope, just those two. I thought we got something else for free as well a little while ago. Uh, do, uh, at the very least that I'm aware of, it's just those two. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not averse to being wrong, as we all know. So, <laughs> so yeah, I did. With your um, relationship and technological sharing with Lightspeed Rescue, you did get the environmentally sealed uh, grid power, which allows you to, when you're morphed, it allows you to survive indefinitely in toxic atmospheres, vacuum of space. In in um, underwater, Pete has very much taken 
taken advantage of that underwater abilities because he spends a lot of his time with the Dragon Zord. So they have yep. gone for many, a, many a some might say romantic swim. It's not romantic. It's <laughs> just it's a, it, it's a bromance. Um, it's cow love. <laughs> and then I love Wayne, Wayne Q brought back those Zeo shards. Interestingly enough, just you know, for anybody who was paying attention a minute ago, that you absorbed the power of, you got your lesser Zeo powers, which were all molded to the characters that you were. Who knows what might happen in the future, other than me. <laughs> and even I don't really know, because things happen. To be opinion. fair as well, I again, I keep saying this this same phrase, but drawing back the curtain on things a little bit here. <laughs> so, like, we we all know that Matt has like a definitive end game as such, like where the story is going to end up. But one of the most beautiful things that I have found about our game is how malleable the space in between that is, because you constantly let in us throw in ideas. Of like, ah, oh, could we maybe have this happen, or could this happen, or could we do this? And yeah, it is. It is uh, again, as I said at the beginning of this, I could go on about like the other players and yourself so much better than I can about me. It's it's so nice to have like a storyteller such as yourself that a can build this complex story and like drop all of these little like easter eggs and like little checkoffs guns here and there but then also adapted our own personal storylines that we want like one that's coming up in the future that someone may have spoiled something a little bit about in the comments <laughs> but <laughs> but which i will say there have already been hints throughout the main story of this um, so hints. if anyone yeah so if anyone's picked any of that up do feel free to shout out in the chat <laughs> thanks for letting us go way off the rails we can't yeah, but see the still, rails <laughs> still keeping everything in that narrative like pathway that you want it to go it's uh it is good and i enjoy it thank you um i don't like compliments, but I appreciate. That's it. why I do it, Ma. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> what you have to say. Um, it is my own means of personal torment. No, 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 no. It is the way, Matt. Well, it is the way. Talking about personal <laughs> torment, because um, oh two people can play at that game. We did have some questions sent in ah yes yes let's do some questions uh in advance which i did take a screenshot of <laughs> see jay knows how to do it um you have to add an insult otherwise i can't deal with it um mm -hmm. it's it's a broken part of me i'm sorry um i'm on stream i'm trying to watch the language so if you can't guess who asked these questions, that's a you problem, um, really, at this point. The first question is, whilst it would have been perfectly okay for Peter and Sophie to have continued on as study buddies, what made you say yes to taking their relationship further into romance? Dun, 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 dun. We lost Peter hmm. slash Michael. I, I was I was also reading because just pulling back the curtain. I love that saying. Matt did send me this question so I could like look at it and think about it because I'm not great with being put on the spot as he knows. Um, so obviously Anne has asked this question. Um, <gasps> really? The reason I said yes to the whole relationship thing is, and I'm going to do it again. Drawing back the curtain. That's going to be my new, my new catchphrase now. Pete is going to start using this. Uh, drawing back the curtain. Um, so when, when we had like, the discussion like, off camera about what our characters looked like and, and whatnot, I, just for the sake he's called Peter Parker and whatnot, said Tom Holland and blah, blah, blah. Um, 
and Anne specifically chose a character who, uh, an actress whose name I can never remember because I'm terrible. Um, but if anyone has seen Arrow, she plays Oliver Queen's daughter in that. Um, that's what I know her from. And if I'm honest with you, I personally find her attractive. So for Pete to find her attractive was just a given. Um, but the main reason I said yes was a because Anne asked me if it was something I'd like to do, and I'm a little bit of a people pleaser sometimes. And yeah, um, but also because of how socially inept I am and how uncomfortable I thought it might make me, I thought it'd be a good kind of thing to put myself through to try and make it not so uncomfortable for myself. Um, and I must say, like. Yeah, I must say, like, I, I do feel a bit awkward sometimes with some of, like, the encounters we have, and I'm never quite sure what to, what to say. Um, but then I, I threw out a line a little while ago about, like, actions speaking louder than words, and that, that is very much a Pete thing. Like, he's more likely to do something to tell you how he feels than, like, say something. Um, so I, I think that helps um, in that regard. Um, but, yeah, as well, it was, yeah, it's, it, it was a fun fun thing that I thought would take me out of my comfort zone and as well it was something that I just thought would be nice to bounce off of I do have some follow up questions from Anne but there's also one there from uh, from Jay is Peter going to take gift recommendations from Q in future episodes given his exquisite taste in jewellery <laughs> um yeah, that see one one of the things I'm slightly disappointed that I've not done in the game so far is have as much interaction with Q. Um, considering like story wise, we we said like they they've known each other for a while, and that which could like they grew up together um, and like trained together, and that which could be a reason why they don't need to spend as much time together because they already know like what the other one's going to say and do, sort of thing. Um, but yes, I think. Uh, He'd definitely take some, some gift recommendations from Q, because Q has fabulous taste. Well, there's going to be a lot of opportunities um, in the near future, because we're going to be exploring one of the celebrations of Q's home in probably april looking at when it gets into the looking at the calendar april is probably when it's going to hit on stream and there's going to be a lot of opportunities for some more q centric stories i must say the kobayashi maru was probably one of my favorite episodes that we've had just because of it again drawing back the curtain uh, <laughs> i love it i love it so much it's no 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 hashtag dbtc i'm never gonna remember that uh, <laughs> i don't care draw back the curtain um draw, drawing back the curtain you made me lose my train of thought now kobe ashimaru ah yeah kobe ashimaru like Drawing back the curtain, I while, while that whole situation was going on, I messaged Jay going, "This is an effing like effing simulation, isn't it?" I was like, "Please tell me it's a simulation, right? It's a simulation, right?" <laughs> and I, I knew it was the whole time, and I do believe it was because he didn't see the messages that he hadn't replied. But at the same time, part of me still thinks that he was like maybe going, I'm not going to admit it to him. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> uh, um, so, like, the title of Pete's autobiography, Drawing Back the Curtain, Towers of a Green Ranger. Yes, epic. <laughs> it would be my memoirs. It was. Um, um, but yeah, that, um, that whole situation was just like super fun because obviously I knew it was a simulation in my mind but wasn't a hundred percent sure but also just the fact again it's that whole oh, there isn't a winning scenario in this occasion someone is going to lose somehow um and I, also i felt like that was a nice development moment for pete as well not just completely succumbing to he has my friend and i'm going to kick goldar in the teeth to 
no priorities, people first. Like, Q's fine, he can handle it. Maybe. Acnef wants to know what snack foods Peter has at hand when stress munching. When stress munching? Oh, oh, oh. Always got to be some kind of like easily accessible chocolate. Probably, like, I'm going to be real lame here, but chocolate buttons, like dairy milk chocolate buttons, <clears throat> giant chocolate buttons, big bag of fantastic um but then i'm quite keen to a meaty snack as well or like, give me a pepperami or something like that or there's um it's an eastern european thing but it's like a, 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 a i call it meaty stick just because that's basically what it is it's just like a long meat it's like a really thin pepperami but they're beautiful and i can't remember what it's called i also do very much love beef jerky so pete would as well I'm How's no. Pete's uni course going? Well, um, he hasn't blown anything else up just yet. Just his eyebrows. No, he eyebrow. didn't blow up his eyebrows. And he didn't blow them up. Okay, he saved his lady. <laughs> he saved his lady. His lady. <laughs> when you initially agreed to the romance angle, what did you, what did you have in mind? What did I have in mind mm -hmm. to be put in severely uncomfortable situations that I was not going to enjoy <laughs> at first until I realized that I was going to enjoy them? <laughs> um, to be honest, I don't really being completely honest, I don't have any real plans in that regard. I haven't mapped out where I want their relationship to go because that as like a normal like a real relationship as such, it's just kinda nice to see where it takes us. And Pete is going to be having words with Sophie if and when she returns. Because <laughs> she has done stupid things and he shall be worried, depending on how those situations unfurl in in my head like the instant that she disappeared and didn't like come back pete knew something was wrong but we'll see how that all plans out um but yeah in terms of how i see it going um pete is very much just thanking his lucky stars that he has someone and he's Ooh. just taking things day by day trying not to screw it up basically um <laughs> So first of all, uh, Jay did say, if nothing else comes of being a Green Ranger, Pete has a great future doing laser hair removal. He does, but he does. He then did ask if Peter wasn't able to be the Green Ranger, but had to be a different basic spectrum, core spectrum ranger, not advanced, which colour would you have chosen? <clears throat> Now, as we have seen, I do not make much of a good leader. Although I didn't really get the opportunity to because someone took away my leadership. <laughs> and there is good reason for it because he knew I would not make a good leader. <laughs> um, so red would have been out of the question, but that probably would have been the next one I would have wanted to take for being able to hit things hard. But saying that, after being in the group and watching how other characters have played i would probably go for yellow for that triple strike beautiful goodness um because that is hilarious interesting plus plus shout out to cow i love like to panic i love how he plays cow um they are some of like the funniest like moments we've had on uh, on the stream so far is just either panic or cow saying or doing something hysterical um, <laughs> The last of the pre-prepared questions I had from Anne, because she wasn't sure if her phone would hold out. What surprised you about their developing romance? Uh, sorry, repeat that. I was reading. Rude. What I know, sorry. What surprised you about their developing romance? What surprised me about it? Um... I don't really know. I don't really know. So, allow me to ask a question. Has it made you feel as 
as uncomfortable as you thought it would? Not as uncomfortable, no. I feel like I've dealt with it pretty well. Um, there's been a couple of little moments. Like I've probably said some stupid things. Um, like just off the cuff, but that's just... Yeah, my stupidity coming through with like a lack of... I'm not quite sure what to say in that situation, so I have to respond and mouth thinks before brain. Um, but yeah, um, what, yeah, that probably would be something. It, it hasn't been as uncomfortable for myself, and I've actually... There's been a few... A few interactions that I've specifically like really enjoyed in that situation. The one where we were like out stargazing, um, that was just a really nice um, like atmosphere in that episode. Um, we, I think that was when we went for the drive, um, and then obviously the New Year's episode. Um, I had uh, originally I joked about with Anne saying like, "Oh, what we should do in the episode is like." Sophie set up like mistletoe for everyone, like to try and get Pete and Pete like have it strategically that he would avoid all of them. So like they were the only ones that didn't get their kiss scene. But then when we were up, like staring out at the stars again, that's something that they quite enjoy doing. Um, I I don't know. The moment just kind of felt right. So I, I off I wasn't planning to have that sequence like go like that. Um, but I think it's something that that Anne as Sophie wanted to happen in the game because she wanted us to kind of cement that relationship. And yeah, at that moment, I was just kind of like, no, this feels like a right moment to kind of interject that. So I was, yeah, that was something that surprised me, like how how easily I was able to like get comfortable in taking the, relation, the relationship further. Um, and just as Anne has said in the chat, the drive wasn't something that was actually covered on stream. So if you think you've missed I, it, I, I forgot about you that. Yeah, haven't, and you have. Um, in that it wasn't something that we. Um, in that we did. It was just something. I completely forgot that that Maybe. wasn't on stream. Um, to be fair, uh, yes, and is correct. That was a a kind of like once we discussed the whole relationship. Um, idea. Um. Obviously, first few interactions with it are, are a little bit uncomfortable, and Anne agreed to like give me a little bit of off-screen kind of coaching for it. So we ju we basically ran through just a, a date scenario, pretty much. The characters went on like a drive, and we just had a chat in character. Um, it was actually very lovely. Um, yeah, um, that kind of made things easier from that point as such. Another question from our favorite red leader, hashtag red bias. What's Pete's feel on how the team is doing in the face of the evil it has faced? Are there any pain or strategy points he would have changed in the team battle dynamics? Hmm. At the beginning... I definitely would have changed how we fought together as a team because it was very much kind of like this character is going to run in and do this and this character is going to run in and do that. Whereas, although it's not a coordinated sort of thing now, there does seem to be a lot more like unspoken coordination between the team like in combat, which is very nice. Um, on how he feels the team is doing like faced with with everything um i don't that it's never really something that i personally have thought about um i think p would probably think that they're doing pretty damn well like you know everyone's still alive and no one's died yet um <clears throat> uh, save like one incident um <laughs> But they didn't die. Um, um, but yeah, we've we've experienced some tragedy and some loss. But at the same time, we've done so much good that he feels all the terribleness has been negated, and the fact that they actively have plans for some of the like more how Pete would see them, like the darker aspects of things. So obviously the Ranger Slayer and 
and and Ryan, like two potentially good people that have been corrupted, because obviously we don't know Ryan's true personality behind everything in our main reality. Um, but yeah, he'd, um, he'd, he'd say that Pete would think we're doing pretty well. Um, he'd be amazed by how well Q is dealing with things, considering like he's always got quite a cool, calm and collected appearance going on. Um, and being that Pete knows him really well, he hasn't noticed that he's overly stressed, apart from any time his parents come up. Ooh, what's Pete's greatest fear as a ranger? Just very quickly, for the record, um, and for the people <coughs> that are here, because uh, out of curiosity, yep, we, we're three, four, five. You're on solid B plus territory. There's a few things that you've missed, but you're on solid B plus territory in the main timeline or in the main universe. Yeah. The world hasn't gone to shit yet. Yeah. So <laughs> we're all right. We're all right. Um, I like that one again, Jay. You're coming out with some good questions. I like it. Uh, what's Pete's greatest fear as a ranger? Um. Hmm. There, are, he, he's got a couple. His biggest fear, after Goldar. No, like that, that's not his biggest fear. As a ranger, like that, Goldar is just one of his biggest fears. Um. Um. One of his biggest fears would be after. Q came back from space finding out that Vic is the Psycho Blue Ranger. One of Pete's biggest fears is feeling that he could, if he ever gave into that, him becoming a Dark Ranger. Or the other fear, which is quite thematic considering it was my idea to be Psycho Green in the Warner timeline. Um, <laughs> um, um, or Losing another teammate. Um, obviously, the the Vic situation. Pete was one of the ones that didn't want to leave in that moment when we were like discussing it both on and off table. We knew, like, obviously off camera, we knew why everyone had to leave, but on camera, not so much. Um, but yeah, pro probably either succumbing to becoming a Dark Ranger himself uh, or losing another team member. Interesting. Very interesting. And it's not necessarily that Pete thinks Q is okay. He just thinks he's dealing with it really well. If that makes any kind of sense. I give up talking. I'm blind. <laughs> it's so dirty. I was like, why why can't I see anything? And I took him off and I was like, oh, I can see better. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's never good. Does anyone else in the chat have any further questions for our lovely green Power Ranger? Sometimes these subtitles come out very weird because one of those, oh, just, those one of those just came up as television tonight. <laughs> the defense rests. I feel we have no more questions, dear boy. The defense has rested. I have a question. Okay, throw your question at me, dear boy. I have a question. So, <laughs> two cards face down. And end my turn! Yes. We, <laughs> I just we, did two references there. You and I have walked a precarious road in the terms of you, for the most part, are our 
art department. Sometimes I'm just like, Michael, I need a Create demon. me something. Yeah, just like, I need a demon looking thing. Just, you know, and I'll build stats for it afterwards. I'd like it to be known that some of the artwork comes out better than others. Okay. <laughs> Michael, nobody here has any issues with your artwork other than you. Um, sometimes some of the artwork does mean that I've had to very carefully give you information. So, like, Indeed. you knew when Goldar was going to show up, obviously. But you did I knew when the, well I knew when the Psycho Rangers were going to show up. And you did know when the Psycho Rangers were going to show up. And the um, fact that they would have monster forms. <laughs> and the fact that they would have monster forms. Which I will say was one of the hardest, and I'm going to do it, I don't care, that was one of the hardest fucking things I've ever had to do. Because there is no artwork anywhere for those goddamn monster forms, except for like the old nineteen like ninety five original like design notes for them, so and trying then, to actually figure out what they look like was annoying. And then across the stars come out. Yeah, and they've got some really nice artwork of the monster forms. Could have used that. Could have used that very impressed. much. Um, so I was not. Whilst I never tell you mechanics or anything like that i'll say like i do need the psycho rangers and their monster forms or we need tengas so you're aware that we're gonna have tengas showing up i would like to point out that he doesn't i i some of the monsters he'll go i need for like this episode so mm. say for example the demons i knew we were going to be fighting demons in um and birthday episodes because that's what i've been asked for but like for instance with bdb um had no idea when he was going to get thrown in i was just asked can you do some monsters for me i was like cool i'm in a bug mood have some insects <laughs> so that's how it works um what was the question again the question hadn't been asked yet i was getting to the question oh, yeah, and you kind of <laughs> sort of almost answered it the question was going to be, with that in mind, has it been difficult keeping what you know out of what you do in-game? Um, no, not really. Because no. I, I, never, I never know. No. The, the only one was the Psycho Rangers. Um, I was trying to I was kind of glad that Yale got beat down um, in the first fight so easily um, because I knew that obviously we had the second lot of monsters forms come in so I didn't want that episode to end too quickly so that we had a reason for the next episode and the monsters to show up but mo most of the time it is a case of you ask me to design and I don't know what episode they're coming in so, and I don't I also don't know how they're stated up. Um, I think the only ones I've had any sort of idea of how they were stated up was Goldar. And that's just because I knew he was a, a threat level 14. Um, I think there was a little bit of a discussion with the Psycho Rangers and how not necessarily what threat levels in that they were, but how they would get stronger, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think we had the conversation that we was going to be involving the monstrous forms... So we needed the monstrous form artwork. Um, and oh, I'd like to I'd like to draw back the curtain one more time. Indeed, I I, I would like to draw back the curtain once more. Um, I, I would like to say that I fully take credit for the Vic as the Blue Psycho Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> that was something that when when Vic Blessing was still part of our game, he threw us some like story like backstory for his character and from that me and matt was like we should totally do this and then when it come to the point where he was no longer able to play with us um <laughs> i was just like matt if we're doing that do this 
do this. And Matt was like, yep, I'm doing it. So that other thing still hasn't come into fruition. Apparently we no longer have curtains. We have blinds. Okay, removing the blinds. <laughs> 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 uh, one last question then from Anne because it's on this topic what is your favourite piece of art that you've made for the game favourite piece of art that I've made for the game oh god um, the best looking thing I've made for the game is probably BDD so far what is your favourite thing you've done my favourite thing oh my and why isn't it Infernia? I, I was going to say it's either Infernia or Panic's Helmet. I don't know why. That yellow helmet just makes me so happy. It come out so nice, and I was so pleased with it. Um, I also quite like my... Like my... <laughs> my Zord. <laughs> eh. <laughs> yes, that was Tan's most recent question. Um, I very much like my dragon because it's my dragon. Um, I kept him looking kind of dragon zordy and more. I'm a punch you in the face, which is things I very much like. Uh, but also, I think one of the best bits of artwork that have been done is a bit of artwork that no one's seen yet because it isn't finished. Um, and the only credit I can take for this is drawing the basic skeletal work for it. All of like the color and everything, and all of the effect, and when 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 you people see this, you'll understand why I love Matt so much because he has made these things look beautiful, um, and I could not make them look that good if I tried, because I don't know how to use his tablet at all. Um, yeah, they look fabulous, and I look. I I need to finish the the other ones before we can show all of them. So oh yes, okay. So the players have seen them, but not the. Not the audience. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. The audience has right. not seen them. Um, okay, I said last question, but I'm going to ask the question that Jay asked because, yeah. Final question. When will you stop lying to us about not being able to draw and accept that you can, in fact, draw? Meh. <laughs> Tumbleweed. Not this should be <laughs> tomorrow. Eventually. Eventually. Well, it's it's looking at the caliber of artwork that is out there. Like yes, I can draw to an extent, but it's not when when I imagine all of how I want the artwork to look in my head, none of the artwork I've actually drawn looks like it, which is what annoys me. But BDB is probably one of the best things that the audience have seen and i love the fact that we can't say his actual name on camera i mean we can say his actual name because his actual name is yeah. actually war wasp indeed but thanks to our lovely panic who never fails to make me chuckle um yeah bdb has forever been immortalized and if people don't know what that means i'm sure you can like YouTube BDB Pokemon and you'll find it. Probably don't do that, just for the record. Um It's hilarious, do it. Just don't. And one final message, because this is not just to Peter, but to everybody, including to myself, although I'm not going to listen to it. No comparisons to others. It is the false truth. This is very true. Full stop. 100%. Yeah. Don't compare yourself to others. Accept Indeed. what you have Indeed. done as the best you could do at that point. You will get better. Or you won't. It might be the best you can do. It might be a stepping stone to something you learn later. More. But comparing yourselves to others is more likely to result in you losing confidence and the desire to try 
than anything else. Ugh. Are we turning in this into a philosophical debate, dear boy? No, that was Because it. if we're going to go down that route, I would like to say it is a um, human condition to compare oneself to someone else. No, Otherwise, how do we know how to improve? To Michael. Um... <laughs> Okay, by the way, we're not getting into a philosophical di discussion about this. <laughs> and for someone who thought he wouldn't be able to talk about his character, the development of his character, and his role in the game for longer than a few minutes, we have now been at this for an hour and a half, practically. Oh, well done, me. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody, for... I've in. had lots of fabulous questions, though, I must say. Thank you very much for all of your lovely questions. I have very much appreciated it. I will be here Tuesday where we will be building frets, either as actual frets or as non player characters. I haven't worked out which yet. We may even build a vehicle instead of a fret fret but we will be building something mechanical speaking um who knows which yet let's see what happens on thursday uh tuesday and obviously we will be back thursday for more power rangers let there be thunder this week without an whose character if you weren't here last week is currently trapped in the morphing grid. Please join us for I'm some more shenanigans. Coming to save you. May the power protect you and have a great week, everybody. Bye. Farewell. <laughs>